Hello and welcome to another episode of Mr. Boskin Does Some Math. In this episode, we are doing illustrative math, grade 8, unit 8, lesson 3, practice problems. Decide whether each number in this list is rational or irrational. Remember from the lesson, rational means it can be written as a fraction. This is a fraction. So that is clearly rational. Point 0.1234 would be 1,234 ten thousandths. So that is rational. The square root of 37. Well, the square root of 36 is 6. So the square root of 37 is not going to work out nicely. So that is irrational. Negative 77 could be negative 77 over 1. That's rational. The negative square root of 100, the square root of 100 is 10. The negative square root of 100 is negative 10. That could be negative 10 over 1. That would be a fraction. The negative square root of 12. Well, the square root of three, the square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of 16 is 4. The square root of 12 is not going to come out as a nice whole number. So that one has to be irrational. For our next problem, it asks, which value is an exact solution of the equation m squared equals 14? Well, 7 squared is 49, so that's definitely not it. The square root of 14, the square root of 14 squared is 14, that works. 3.74 might be approximate, but that is not exact. And the square root of 3.74 is definitely too small. Okay. A square has vertices 0, 0, 5, 2, 3, 7, and negative 2, 5. Which of these statements is true? The square's side length is 5. The square's side length is between 5 and 6. The square's side length is between 6 and 7. The square's side length is 7. Well, how do you suppose we could answer this? To answer this question, we are going to need graph paper. Ta-da! Through the magic of technology, graph paper. I plotted those four vertices and drew a square. How are we going to find out the side length of this square? Well, first, let's find the area. To find the area, we can do what we've done before and enclose the square inside a larger square. The area of this larger square, which is 7 by 7, is 49 square units. Now we have four smaller triangles surrounding our square, which are 2 by 5. 2 times 5 is 10. 10 over 2 is 5. There are four of them, 5, 10, 15, 20. So the area of our total inner square has to be 49 subtract 20, which is 29 square units. So the area of that is 29 square units. Well, the side length of a square with an area of 29 square units has to be the square root of 29 units. So 
Is the square root of 29 equal to 5? No. Is it equal to 7? No. We know it's going to have to be one of these that's either in between 5 and 6 or in between 6 and 7. Well, the square root of 25 is 5, and the square root of 36 is 6. 29 falls in between those, which means the square root of 29 has to be in between 5 and 6. Our next question says to rewrite each expression in an equivalent form that uses a single exponent. So this is a review from last unit. We need to use our properties of exponents to find out the value of this using a single exponent. When we have a term raised to a power, we multiply the exponents. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. So you could write this as 10 to the power of negative 6. Or you could write this as 1 over 10 to the power of 6. Our next one, again, raised to a power. Multiply the exponents. That is equal to 3 to the power of negative 6. Negative 3 times 2, negative 6. You could also get rid of that negative exponent by writing this as 1 over 3 to the power of 6. Our next one, we are multiplying... but we do not have the same base, which means we cannot just combine the exponents. However, because we have the same exponent, we can multiply bases. 3 times 4 is 12, so this is equivalent to 12 to the power of negative 5, or 1 over 12 to the power of 5. Now the next one is 2 to the power of 5 times 3 to the power of negative 5. We do not have equivalent bases. We do not have equivalent exponents. What can we do to this? Well, 3 to the power of negative 5, we can get rid of that negative exponent and call this 2 to the power of 5 times 1 over 3 to the power of 5, which would be equivalent to when we're multiplying fractions, we just multiply numerator and denominator. The denominator of this would be 1. So that is 2 to the power of 5 over 3 to the power of 5. Well, now we know if we have a fraction and the numerator and denominator have the same exponent, this could be 2 thirds raised to the power of 5. So now we've rewritten each of those with a single exponent. Our next question, we are looking at the graph of a function representing the area of Arctic sea ice in square kilometers as a function of day of the year in 2016. Given approximate interval of days when the Arctic sea ice was decreasing, Decreasing on a graph, going down from here to here, approximately, it is decreasing. What interval of days is that? Day 75 
to day 245. Roughly it's decreasing through this interval. Part B, on which days was the area of Arctic sea ice 12 million square kilometers? Well, when were we at 12 million square kilometers? 12 million square kilometers is this value. So it happened here on day 130. However, that's not it. If we follow this over, it was also 12 million there and there. So that's approximately day 355 and day 360. I see three values at that 12 million mark. So that's a good reminder. When we are looking for a value, make sure we get all of the values. It could help with this to actually draw. Not the best line I've ever drawn, but it could help to draw that line across. Our last problem is the high school is hosting an event for seniors, but will also allow some juniors to attend. The principal approved for the event, approved the event for 200 students and decided the number of juniors should be 25% of the number of seniors. How many juniors will be allowed to attend? If you get stuck, try writing two equations that represent the number of juniors and number of seniors at the event. So this is a review of systems of equations, two equations that go together. Our first thing we need to figure out is what are our unknowns? What values are we trying to figure out? Well, we need to figure out the number of juniors and the number of seniors. I'm going to call them X and Y, and I'm going to label them number of juniors, number of seniors. So now we're going to need multiple equations. We know the total number of people for the event is 200. That means the number of juniors plus the number of seniors is equal to 200 students. We also know the number of juniors should be 25% of the number of seniors. So the number of juniors is equal to 25%, which is 0.25 or 1 fourth of the number of seniors. So now we have two equations. One of them is already solved for a variable. That means we can substitute it in. If x is equal to that, we can substitute that in for x in the other equation. So 0.25y plus y is equal to 200, or, combine like terms, 1.25y is equal to 200. Solve for y next. Divide by 1.25. Divide by 1.25 y is equal to 160. If y equals 160, x plus y equals 200. 
x plus, substitute this value in for y, x plus 160 equals 200, subtract 160 from each side, Oops. x has to equal 40. So how many juniors will be allowed to attend the event? X is juniors, there will be 40 juniors at the event. There will also be 160 junior or 160 seniors at the event. Make sure you are answering the question that is asked though. The question we are asked is how many juniors will be allowed to attend? There will be 40 juniors allowed to attend the event. This has been another episode of Mr. Boskin Does Some Math. Thank you for tuning in, and we will see you next time.